More armor sets have been found in the game files and it looks like they're going to be arriving on the scene pretty soon. And we've also got some more insight on some of the new weapons and even more armor sets that look like they're also going to be making an appearance in the Siege of Paris DLC. Now, of course, the insider info is all down to our very own community, Yom's Viking Pedder. So thanks again, mate. And get your salt shaker ready, folks. But perhaps use a little bit less going forward because he keeps getting absolutely everything right. So lots of fun stuff to talk about here. And let's swan dive in. So it looks like we've got three new sets coming to the game in terms of the Helix store. And the reason why I say it'll be in the Helix store is because these sets are located in the same place in the game files that Ulla's Hunter's armor was before its recent release. Now, the first one is going to be the Charlemagne set. And Pedder tells me this is likely to be the next one on the list to be arriving. And I think it may be just before the Siege of Paris, as it's quite topical. Now, Charlemagne, also known as Charles the Great or the King of the Franks, he's actually the grandfather of Charles the Fat, who Ubisoft have already named as being one of the big boy antagonists for the next DLC, just as an FYI. But more interestingly, the actual visual models for the armor set haven't actually been added to the game files yet, but we do seem to have pretty much all the information about it. Now, the same thing happened with the Ulla's armor set where we actually had all the info, then the visuals appeared shortly after, and then the implementation of this pack followed two weeks later in the game store. Now, we might not have the full set here, but we do have the Charlemagne ship cosmetic, which Pedder actually found pre Wrath of the Druids months ago, and it does actually look quite regal, as you'd expect from a king. And I think the ship design here will kind of set the tone for the armor set just as previous helix packs have done before so in this pack we're going to be picking up a gear set new weapons a shield a mount skin and a raven skin now mount wise it does seem that we're going to be picking up our very first bear mount specifically a polar bear called the Ours de guerre which in my very good french accent actually translates to war bear but kev true british viking rohit nimmer sirbani and iron this is all going to be music to your ears but perhaps not the exact music track you want to hear as it looks like it's going to be behind a paywall unfortunately and it also looks like we're going to be picking up a rooster for the raven skin as well which is very french and i think that all kind of makes sense because we've already got the rooster skin in the game anyway so you may actually remember from the astara festival that kind of rooster quest as well as the polar bear from the legendary animal challenge in norway so expect this set to be reskin orientated with a few creative additions however we've got a couple notable things in this set and that's the helmet slot which is actually called charlemagne's crown and it states that it's closer to a crown than a helmet so some cool potential transmog options here if you do decide to get it and if you remember in previous videos we talked about the joist which Pedder also did find months ago and it looks like this is actually going to be coming to this pack which is a little bit unfortunate to be honest I was kind of hoping it would be free and the reason for that is it actually exists in real life as a sword it's currently in the Louvre in Paris and was used to actually coronate Frankish kings from 13th century onwards final mention on this set though we are also picking up an imperial shield and it's got several Latin engravings on it so we will be interesting to see what that comes out like now I also know that some of you have been super keen for a werewolf set myself included and and cow in particular well good news mate because i do think it's coming same thing applies here though it is named in the game files as an official armor set but we don't have as much info on it as the charlemagne set so i reckon this is going to be appearing a little later down the line in terms of a helix set release we're also waiting visuals on this but what we do have is that ship cosmetic that peda found and again this scheme is part of this armor set so i'd expect the style of the armor set to follow this ship cosmetic visually and if i was to hazard a guess at what kind of set this reskin is going to be based on i don't think we need to look too far as i reckon it's going to be creatively based around the berserker outfit i think it's pretty much going to be this with a few creative additions such as a werewolf headpiece i think it's one of the better looking helix sets and i'm really keen to see how this turns out now at number three it looks like we're going to be picking up the jormungand armor set and jormungand is actually known for being called the world serpent because he actually encircles the whole of midgard or earth essentially and grasps his own tail in doing so interestingly he's the middle child of loki and it's actually foretold that when he actually decides to release his own tail, Ragnarok will begin. So could we see Jormungandr making an appearance in perhaps some Isu flashbacks going forward in game? I'd love to see it as Loki's children are playing a pretty prominent role in the game so far and this armor set could be a little nod to that. Again with this set though we've got ourselves a snake ship cosmetic scheme which I think is going to be setting the tone for what to expect in terms of the appearance of this armor set and I'm really interested to see how they're going to put this one together. I really do hope it's not just an entire reskin because I think it's got some serious potential to be an absolute banger and of course this armor set has been noted in the game files as being part of a whole pack and as such we're kind of lacking any further information on it at the moment so I would expect this in a few months time potentially after the Siege of Paris actually has hit and by the way folks if you do want to be the first to know when these armor sets do drop it may be worth clicking the notification bell as we'll be slinging them out in a no-nonsense fashion just like we did with the Cougar Mount and the Ulla's Hunter armor set now it doesn't stop there because Pedder's found clear as day references to three more armor 
armor sets that look like they're going to be appearing in the Siege of Paris DLC. Those three being the Paladin, the Reaper, and the Bellatore armor set. Now, starting off with the Paladin set, the overarching stats state that we'll be consuming a lot more stamina when we're actually equipping it in exchange for dealing more damage. It also states that we'll be able to pick this armor set up in the region of Melon in Normandy. And this is good news, actually, because Melon was actually a region that Pedder found in the game files months ago. And I also popped that into our speculative DLC map, as you can kind of see here. Now, moving on to the Reaper set, it looks like this is going to be another assassination focused armor set, which bodes well as more kind of assassin -y stuff, the better I say. But we'll be able to restore some health after a successful assassination on this particular set, which I don't think is a great buff, to be honest. So I am hoping for more enticing attributes to this particular armor gear set. And I've got no doubt that Pedal will be rustling up some more info about that closer to launch. And interestingly, you'll be able to get this armor from Rebel Missions, which we actually did speak about in detail in a previous video. So if you're not really sure or haven't heard of what Rebel Missions are, it may be worth checking out that video as I think it's going to be playing a prominent role in this next DLC. And if I may be so bold to say, on par with the trading system that we received in Ireland. Now for the Bellatore set, it looks like we're going to be picking up a very lavish armor set here. And Ped has actually found reference to the Bellatore Day in the game data as actually being a faction that are fanatical soldiers of God, which you can kind of look at as zealots essentially. These do look like the kind of order member faction in Paris, but we'll get more confirmation on that closer to the time. Very speculative at this stage, but it does seem that they're going to be dropping an armor set. And one final gear mention here before we do tuck into a few weapons, and that's this Frankish travel cloak. The description states that this is a cloak that's made for safe traveling in Frankia. Now, I don't think this is going to be a Harry Potter invisibility cloak, but it does seem certain that this cloak will allow us to improve our social stealth just by equipping it. So keeping up with the fashion trends in Paris, essentially, and I'd expect nothing less. Oh, and by the way, folks, if you found any value or learned anything new in this video, a quick like down below only takes a second and it would be very kind and very helpful. So thanks very much. So let's talk about some weapons. And as discussed in a previous video, we do have scythes coming to the game. It looks like we're going to be picking up four of them in the expansion and I've popped them up on the screen for reference. Pet has also confirmed that the Durandal, which we've actually spoken about extensively over the last few months, the weapon of Roland, who was Charlemagne's champion, actually has an achievement next to it in the game data stating that we need to kill enemies using this one-handed sword. So I've got a feeling this is the sword or the one-hander we've actually seen advertised in the trailers so far. And even more interestingly, there's also been a separate weapon which has been noted in the game files. And Pedder tells me that this is called the Rusty Sword. So could this be the weapon we actually initially pick up in the festival tournament that we also discussed in the previous Sigablot Festival video? Perhaps this is kind of an induction weapon that we get to grips with and learn what it's all about, the new moves, etc. And I think this is probably going to be our first freebie that we do get, which is available for everybody when they actually release the one-handed swords to the game. And speaking of swords, Pedder's also found Tear's Hand, and it's noted in the game files as being made of the finest metal touched by Odin himself. There's also another entry where it says Tear's hand is now mine. So it sounds very cool and something which I now feel like I want right now. Now Tear's hand does sound excellent but what's even better is our community of awesome people on our Discord server. We talk about everything here and it would be great to see you in the lobby so do come over and say hi. We also run a weekly photo mode competition where everybody votes on the best photo of that week so come submit your photos and speaking of which actually big congrats to Kaylee on a win last week so great photo mate and of course big thanks again to Pedder, another top shift mate we're all loving this insider info keep it flowing keep it coming and until we get any more i think that's it for me on this one folks so i hope you enjoyed it and i'm sure i'll see you in the next video until then coffee's on me